Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Today, let's take a look at, hands down, the craziest guitar I've ever seen. And ask why. Just, just, just why? Why? But also celebrate the fact that there are people this insane to actually create Steve Vai's Ibanez Hydra. Alright, so about a week ago, Andrew Baina sent me the reveal video of Steve Vai's Hydra, and I was like, what the fuck is this? Science has gone too far, skimmed through it, and then closed the video. Over the past couple days, I've been getting a lot of questions about it. Have I seen it? What do I think about it? Will I leverage my position with Toma to try to get a Harley Benton version made? So let's just watch the video together and uh, see what this guitar is all about. <laughs> Pretty epic, epic intro. Steampunky is f okay. I love these shots, man. These vanity shots. <clears throat> Pause. <laughs> If you're not familiar with the Hydra, the multi-headed monster from Greek mythology, um, and as you can see, this thing has a lot of a lot of strings and a lot of necks and presumably a lot of heads going on. Twelve-string neck, half of it fretless. Twelve-string on or off. Twelve-string piezo stainer pickup. Yeah, why not? Have a fucking uh, dryer dial for the stainer motion. I can't even talk. A bass neck, because obviously at this point, why not? Half fretless. Bass on and off, bass volume. Seven string neck, which uh, at this point is the most normal feature of the guitar. Seven string on and off, seven string well tap. Yeah, man, like the steampunk uh, aesthetic is awesome with this. Okay, switch. 13 harp strings. I totally missed that the first time around. <laughs> it's had a fucking harp built in. Ah, oh, the seducer. Dragonizer, I don't know what that does. Climax regulator, that's important. Petition have a climax regulator on every single guitar going forward. That's groundbreaking. Optional lamp <laughs> The feature seems kick- Oh my god. It just keeps going. It just keeps giving you more. Oh my god. Hey, you know, though, for something that's called the Hydra that's supposed to have a lot of heads, this only has two, so... Commentary on technicalities. <laughs> that's fucking insane. It's like the sheer amount of scientific resources poured into this thing. It's like, hey, should we uh, find a permanently renewable energy resource? Nah, fuck that. Let's build a guitar with the built-in harp, seducer, and climax regulator. <laughs> Jesus. This literally has all the specs. Fretted or fretless? Yes. Guitar or bass? Or harp? Yes. Floyd or hardtail? Yes. It's like Steve Vai just looked at this and was like, fucking give me all of it. Really curious to know what the Dragonizer does. Do they have, uh an actual spec sheet. Low key though, is this the ultimate session instrument? Yeah, like sometimes people are like, oh, I just bring my Stratocaster or my Telecaster because that's the one guitar I need for everything in the studio. Bullshit. This is the one guitar you need for the studio. I mean, this is obviously a one-off, so I haven't found anything on Ibanez's website, but... Okay, so it's got a triple neck. Oh, the bass is actually three-quarter scale length on January 28th, so what is today? Is That's tomorrow. Oh, Steve Vai is releasing a new album in Violate. Vi will auction off a one-of-a-kind NFT of the video via open f right off like okay the idea of nfts is cool but the way they've been utilized lately where you're essentially paying for the bragging rights that you own like a fucking jpeg or an mp4 that's horseshit this says that it's at least includes unlockable content but it can only be unlocked and revealed by the owner of the item well that doesn't sound like a scam maybe i'm just old school but like i am a believer that you should kind of at least know what you're buying before you spend three thousand dollars on it or 
Uh, I guess Ether is down right now, so twenty four forty nine. But anyways, it is Steve Vai, so I'm sure someone will buy it. For the rest of us, we can just uh, watch it on YouTube without the unspecified bonuses, of course. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the guitar itself. Like, who even thinks of doing something like this? Especially the built-in harp. And judging by how much time it takes me to retune a 12-string, I don't want to know how much time it takes to restring and retune this thing. I think personally my brain would go into complete meltdown like with option paralysis if I actually held it. This is complete insanity and I love that. What do you think? Do you think this is a celebration of what the best guitar scientist minds on the planet can provide? Or do you think it's an absolute abomination and should be burned at the stake? And get all thoughts, leave them down below. You know, I was gonna end the video right there, but I'm having a lot of fun, so let's see what else is going on in the guitar world. Oh god, well on a related note, Gibson preparing to sell NFTs of its most famous Guitars do not punchable tokens have a good tone. It's gonna bring a whole new aspect to the tone wood debate. What string gauge is on your NFT? Okay, so this is a good explanation if you don't know what NFTs are. It's a one-time certificate that requires digital ownership. Uh, it uses blockchain technology to show up and prove who owns it and when it was purchased. So it's like cryptocurrency, but for different digital assets. The idea is cool for uh, like digital art or like music, right? Because digital goods are uh, by nature infinite in supply, but infinite supply messes with traditional economics, right? Because then it's got no value. But especially for us musicians, I mean, we know art has value, whether it's digital or physical. So in theory, it's a great idea to help artists and musicians make a living. Uh, and for the consumer side, you can link real-world bonuses to those NFTs, you know, permanent discount on merch or permanent VIP backstage access or whatever, you know, as long as they're fully disclosed. But a lot of it is just turned into people with way too much money paying each other way too much money for pictures. Anyways, apparently on January 14th, Gibson filed for trademark registrations for uniquely shaped body portion for six of its famous models, including Les Paul Flying V, SG Thunderbird Explorer, and what looks like either an ES330 or ES335. So they just filed trademark registrations. And I guess, I mean, knowing what we know about Gibson, they're extrapolating out that Gibson will be selling NFTs, but that's not actually what the article is saying. Yeah, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if they're working on NFTs. You know, Ibanez is doing it, uh, ESP is doing it too. But really, they've just trademarked the shape, so like, nobody is doing a Les Paul NFT unless it's Gibson. That's basically what they've done here. This is the most America picture I've seen all day. It's got a little bald eagle poking out here. Hell yeah, dude, let's ball out in the metaverse. All right, never mind. Uh, this isn't fun anymore. I don't want to talk about NFTs. <laughs> I think they're cool as long as there's some sort of transferable real world perk, but that doesn't seem to be what most companies are doing. And why would you when people are paying obscene amounts of money for a JPEG? And on that highly optimistic note, I'm gonna go away and play guitar now. You can subscribe if you want to or not. This isn't really the normal type of content that I make. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you do though. That helps the channel out. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.